This is a two-part video about problems with veneer and problems with an old, dried-up finish that has just turned into a mess. Let's get into it. I'm your host, Zeke, with Odd Job Fix. This is an American piece. I'd put it around the 1920s. It takes its style from uh, neoclassical or Victorian. I think the trestle down there suggests Victorian. The construction is veneer over solid wood. I'm going to take a little walk around this thing and see what's wrong with it. It's very dark and I don't want to strip it. Matter of fact, I don't like to strip anything. But the main thing is, and I'll try to get a real good close up, is that the finish is really dry. It's, it's lightly crazed, but it isn't real serious, but it's just very dry. It lacks any shine whatsoever. So what I intend to do with it, I intend to very lightly sand it and get rid of some of the crazing. Then I'll put a few coats of shellac on it. This is just a close-up of what happens to shellac when it just gets completely old and dried up. Varnish will do the same thing since most varnishes have a shellac base. So let's start with the top here. The, the veneer has got some lifting right there at the seam. There are six sections on the top of this table, mahogany. Um, they're burled and you can see some problems there with the grain lifting. Uh, but there's a couple places where it's just popped right there in the seam. That's a check. It's different than, than a pop. So that can be filled. The other's going to have to be glued down. So there's an example of what we're going to end up gluing down. And then we'll just fill with wood filler, the checking. So what I'm doing here is I've got an iron. And I think uh, the temperature is going to show about 290 degrees. Now, old glue melts at uh, about 150 degrees and wood burns at 500 degrees. So I'm going to be careful here. Try not to rest the actual iron on the wood, but keep it on that wet strip. Now, that was 30 seconds worth. I just edited it out. This is a piece of pipe, and the purpose of this is, is to put pressure just on the seam and not anywhere around it. I want to push just the seam down. I don't want to push the whole thing down. And that looked like that worked out pretty well. It's nice and flat now. And here's another view. There's a little bit of a separation there, but that's something for a wood filler. What I'm mainly concerned about is getting that peak back down level with the rest of the table surface. Around the edge of the table, we're going to see various chips that will be filled with shellac sticks. Now I show that in another video and I will leave a link below and a card at the end so that you can see that uh, that video on using shellac sticks. Now I'm taking some thinned out shellac here and I'm just uh, brushing it on without really giving it a whole lot of care. I know I'm going to do this a few times so the idea is just to get a built up finish and hopefully this finish will blend into the old finish. Let's take another live walk around this table. After the flood coat of shellac, there's still quite a bit of modeling. Alligatoring, I guess you can call that. I'm going to start my sanding process here using sandpaper where I can. And that would be on flat surfaces and away from corners. Being very careful not to rub through the finish. Again, the color on this piece of furniture is in the finish. It's not in the wood. So if I go through, I'm going to end up exposing the light wood that's underneath. Now steel wool works really good on contours and places where sandpaper just wouldn't be appropriate. And I will we'll also use a Scotch-Brite pad in certain places to just make sure that I scuff everything up for any subsequential coats. 
Yesterday I sanded out most of the brush marks. I got pretty aggressive. Um, I was using 220 and 320 and even a random orbital sander in some of the areas that uh, I knew weren't going to be a problem. The mixture that I used, the shellac with a, just a trace of turpentine and um, thinned out with quite a bit of alcohol, uh, seems to have dissolved most of the modeling and the uh, crazing, checking, which is what it was intended to do. Uh, it's way too shiny and it's way too detailed to actually try to rub it out with pumice. So I believe what I'm going to do is just clean it up and put a matte finish or eggshell type of finish on the legs. However, I will treat the top differently. I will use some sanding sealer on the top and then do a rubbing process. So we're looking pretty good so far as soon as we get some of these things taken care of. And the step beyond that will be to take a brush and try to darken some of these areas that were completely rubbed away. Well, obviously I didn't check my monitor and um, I didn't realize the camera was focused on the drawers behind the, uh, below the, the leg. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this here even though it's fuzzy. You can kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm just hitting all the light spots. The wood underneath the dark finish is a fruit wood. It's almost a blonde wood. So anywhere that it's thin, that's uh, where it's going to need to be darkened in. I left a little bit of it just for character. Uh, you can't get it all and I didn't want it perfect. So, but um, I think it looks pretty good.